ASP.NET makes it easy to secure websites, and up to this point, we've seen how the ASP.NET Configuration Website tool can be used to define access rules as well as users and roles. Now, during that process, we saw that behind the scenes, ASP.NET can create a database by default for us called ASP.NET DB. Well, ASP.NET DB, by default, runs under SQL Server Express. And while SQL Server Express works very well, you'll certainly want to move that up to a more enterprise level server at some point, especially if your website gets a lot of traffic. So in this section, we're going to talk about a tool called ASP.NET Red SQL that can be used to install the membership tables, store procedures, and other database entities that you need to store users' roles and other things. This tool, ASP.NET Red SQL, is very, very simple to run, provides a wizard, and you can get this up and running in literally a matter of seconds. So up to this point, we've seen the ASP.NET DB.MDF file. And every example I've shown has put it in the app data folder. That means it's not shared across multiple web applications. We're only using it for this one. So if you had 50 web applications that all use forms authentication, then by default, you'd have 50 instances of this database. And obviously, that might not be the best way to go. So using this tool, ASP.NET Red SQL, we can install the necessary tables in a master server, such as SQL Server Enterprise. And then all web applications can share that same database. The database, fortunately, supports all the tables and necessary items to make that possible. So when you run the tool, it'll ask you if you'd like to configure SQL Server for application services or if you'd like to remove application services from an existing server that already has the database. We'll be doing the configuration part in this particular demonstration that I'll show you in a moment. From there, we can go in and we can select the server name for where we'd like to install the membership database. It's going to prompt you, do you want to use Windows authentication or custom username and password? And then you can either type the name of the database, you can select default, in that case it'll call it ASP.NET DB, or you can even select an existing database you might already have and have all the membership tables, store procedures, and other related items installed into that existing database if you'd like. So let me show you an example of how easy it is to run through this wizard and what it does for us. Earlier in the module, I showed how we could use the ASP.NET Configuration Website tool to configure users and roles. And when I logged into the site initially, it created an ASP.NET DB database for us and put it in the app data folder. Well, we're going to assume that either based on traffic or just the fact that we want to share the database across multiple ASP.NET web applications, that we want to move this into a full-blown SQL Server instance, such as SQL Server Enterprise. Well, we could actually attach this database right here, because it's a SQL Express database, into SQL Server, and that would work. But let's assume that maybe we don't have it, or we want to create it from scratch. Now, to do that, you can either use a Visual Studio command prompt, if you have Visual Studio installed, or if you're using Visual Web Developer Express, you need to know how to get directly to the ASP.NET Red SQL tool. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate here. So I'm going to run off to Windows Explorer. We're going to go to C Drive. We're going to come into Windows. And we're going to scroll down to Microsoft.NET. Now once you get to there, you basically have to go to the target framework. And since we're on .NET 4 here, we'll go to Framework and V4. Now we can simply scroll down. We'll find ASP.NET Red SQL, which is right there. And we can run it. So you can run it just by clicking on it, and that starts up a wizard. Or if you prefer to use the command prompt, you can do that as well. Now, if you're using Visual Studio, you can actually go to the Visual Studio command prompt and simply type ASP.NET Red SQL, and this wizard will pop up. So that's both ways of doing it. So we're going to hit Next. This is going to take us to configure SQL Server for application services. And we basically want to install the database that has our membership, our users, our roles, and that type of thing in a custom database that we have. So from here, we can simply click on Next. And now it's going to prompt us for the server where we want to put this database. So this will be your SQL Server name. Now, WallyD VPC is currently the actual server I'm running on. But let's say that this is on a separate machine, a separate box. And I have one called uh, WallyD i7. 
and this is a SQL Server instance on a separate machine that I'm going to get to. Now from here I'm going to use Windows Authentication and I'm going to select the default option but if I wanted to install this in an existing database then I could certainly click on the database and now it'll put those membership tables in that database instead of it in its own unique database. So it kind of depends on what you want to do. Now me personally I like to have a standalone database so I know it's specifically for membership but it really depends on what you're doing. We could come in and type a name here if we want a custom name or I can just leave default and what that'll do is leave it as a ASP.NET DB named database. So we're going to go ahead and do that option. So we're going to hit next. It's going to tell us about what it's about to do. So we can see we're going to go to Wally and DI7. We're going to name it ASP.NET DB. We're going to hit next and now it's going to go out to the database and perform the action and now it says it's been created. We'll go ahead and finish. So that's how we can get to the tool. There's the path again, right up top. And once we run that tool, we simply run through the wizard. Now we have that membership database available. Now what do we do from here though? Well, going back to our application, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that database in, but we're not gonna use it now. And I'm gonna go to web.config. And now what we can do is we can change our connection string. Now the membership provider that's defined right here points to this connection string. So the only place we'll have to make a change is right here at the top in the connection string area. So I'm going to come up and we're going to set the data source instead of SQL Express. It's going to be Walling DI7. We're going to use integrated security which means use my Windows credentials. And now I need to take out all of this information here. I'm going to come back and we're going to leave that we're going to take out the user instance and I'm going to say that the database is ASP.NET DB that we want to hit. So now we have our data source. We're going to use Windows Security, my credentials that I log in with, and the database we're going to hit is here. And you'll also see something called initial catalog. Now there's different ways you can do connection strings, so we'll go ahead and leave that since I've shown both but we now have a data source which is our server and we have the database we want to hit and that's all you have to do now the membership provider and if we scroll on down the role provider as well will also use this same connection string so now we're going to be hitting our full SQL server and hitting that ASP.NET database let's go ahead and save that now if we run let's right click on default ASPX and view in browser And earlier, when I ran the ASP.NET configuration demonstration, I showed a JDO account I created. Well, that account's gone now because we're hitting a different database. So let's try to log in. And you'll see that it was very quick. And it didn't do it, obviously. So we can go ahead and try to register. So let's go ahead and this time I'm going to do dwalleen. We'll do test at test.com and a password. create a user and it looks like it worked we're now logged in so we're now hitting a separate database entirely than the one that was local so now we can reuse that database across multiple ASP.NET applications let's go ahead and uh, make sure that that user actually showed up so I'm gonna create a data connection I'm gonna right click on our uh, data connections here we're gonna go to add connection and we're going to change this to hit a SQL Server now, not a SQL Express file. We'll hit OK. Now I'll type in Walling D I7. We're going to use Windows Authentication again, and now we should be able to get, and there's my ASP.NET DB. So let's go ahead, we'll test the connection, it looks good. And now we can actually hit that SQL Server. You can see all the membership tables that I showed earlier in this module are available. And let's just run off to users and we'll say show table data by right clicking on it. And you'll notice there's my Dwalleen user. So you can see everything's now working perfectly. So that's an example of how we can use the ASP.NET Red SQL tool to create a ASP.NET DB type database, a membership database to store users and roles. But instead of using it locally, 
we want to share it and we can actually create it in a full-blown SQL Server instance.